Hey, Richard Bryce here, tennis hacker. In this video, I wanna help you to develop a high attacking forehand. This is a really pivotal shot. That's one of the big differences between higher and lower level players, because until you have the ability to attack the ball that's higher, it means that you're susceptible against moon ball as people can play the ball high and deep to you and you get involved in long, grinding matches. The only way out of that is to have the ability to take the ball and really punish your opponent with it. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. And it's something that I'm working on in my own game at the moment. Now I'm naturally a right-handed player and it took me a long time to learn all the pieces of the puzzle to be able to crush these high balls with my right hand. But unfortunately, I messed my collarbone up in a mountain might crash, so I'm now relearning to play left-handed. My goal is to hopefully become a 5.0 player. I've got a lot of the foundations in place, but the high forehand is one of these missing pieces for me, so it's something I'm working hard on at the moment. So I wanna show you some of my on-court practice and explain kind of what I'm thinking about and how I'm trying to make it happen. And importantly, I also wanna talk about some of the things that I do off-court to enable me to improve quickly with my left hand. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's much appreciated if you could do that as well. Let's quickly talk about the structure of my practice. I worked on multiple different rounds with different types of feed. So I was changing the speed, the depth, and the spin. And for each round that I did, the ball machine was set to variable, so it was moving from side to side. The reason for this is the big piece that I'm trying to develop is the timing and the ability to adapt to the different type of shot. I was also aiming all of my shots into the ad court, so as if I'm playing a right-hander going into my opponent's backhand, partly because that's something that I want to attack, but also just to stop the ball going onto the court and ruin the practice of the players next to me. And talking of that, it was extremely intimidating because there were some very high level players playing, some nationally ranked juniors and at least one player with a very high world ranking. So there's me, an old man, trying not to shank left-handed high forehands, but I did the best I could. So let's talk about the technique, break it down a little bit, and I'll explain the aspects that I'm focusing on. Okay, so let's take a look at the technique and talk about some of the important parts to it. The first thing that you want to notice is that all of these shots are being hit from some variation of an open or semi-open stance. And we set up like this, so then we can drive up into the ball to initiate the swing. The position that you set up in is also gonna be important. You need to make sure that you're far enough away from the ball. If you get too close, it's really challenging and it doesn't work. Now, if you would like some help with your footwork because it's such an important piece of the puzzle, I've created a free program. So I'll place a link up in the corner and I'll place a link down in the description so that you can get hold of that free program because the way that you set up is gonna be absolutely crucial. We've got to make sure that we are the right distance from the ball but then we also need to make sure that we're loaded properly on this outside leg. So as part of our preparation, we've got the pelvis pointing to the side, we've got the torso pointing to the side, or maybe further, a little bit further uh, back, so then we can use a lot more rotation from our torso to generate power. We've got this outside leg loaded. So for me as a left-handed player, it's my left leg that's loaded. If you're a right-handed player, it's gonna be your right leg that you're driving through. So we need to set up to be able to drive through this back or outside hip to initiate the forward swing. And then from there, it's all about the timing. And this is the hard part. So regardless of where you end up driving from, it's about the timing. So you have to sequence things properly. You drive initially through that hip. So you're throwing the hip forwards just after the hip comes forwards. The torso is gonna to start to rotate around. As that happens, it then pulls your arm into this racket-like position. So my hip has rotated, my torso has rotated, and now I'm coming through and you get into this position here before contact. So it's all about the timing of this particular part. I'm set up in position, so I've got that, but now everything is about the timing. So can I sequence the chain? Can I drive through the hip, then the torso, get into the good racket-like position and get the timing to work and make contact 
with the ball out in front of my body in an optimal position. And that's the part that I'm really focusing on. I'm really focusing on trying to get the timing and that's why I'm feeding so many different feeds so that I can get used to it and make the adjustments and try and react and trying to get them all in a nice contact point. So overall, I'm happy with my progress and as a practice session, I feel like it went really well. But I want to point out something that's important and if you watch this sequence uh, so this was one of the later rounds I was dealing with a ball that was a little bit deeper, a lot more spin, so a more difficult ball. I was quite happy with it, but I still missed four or five out of 21 shots. So that means that I'm missing every one in four or every one in five of these high forehands. And that means at the moment, it is not ready for me to try and use this in a point or match situation. Because here, although each kind of setup is different, after I've got used to the first ball, the speed and spin is the same on every single shot. Whereas when you're playing in a match, you don't know how fast it's traveling, you don't know the exact amount of spin on the ball. So you've got to adapt to every shot individually. So if I'm still missing one in four, one in five in this sort of scenario, I'm definitely not at the level where I can use this as a good tactic within a match yet. So like I said, timing is the critical thing that I'm working on at the moment. It's all about being able to read the flight of the ball and to predict how the ball is gonna react off the court so that you can start your swing at the right time. And then can you adjust the speed of your swing and get the sequencing of the kinetic chain? And if you can do all those things, that's what high level timing is about. So this is kind of how I'm working on things on court and thinking about the flight of a different ball and trying to initiate my swing at the right time. Sometimes I wasn't quite being set up and loaded early enough. So that's something that I'm working on as well. But a lot of it is just about the timing. Do I start the swing before the ball bounces, as the ball bounces, after the ball bounces? So this is the on-court work, but in addition to that, I do a lot of work off the court to try and improve how my body functions. Now the visual piece is huge. Can you read the speed, the spin, the flight of the ball? But my visual system isn't the limiting factor. It used to be, but that's something that I fixed a long time ago, and that's what allowed me to be able to develop these high attacking forwards with my right hand. But because I could do it with my right hand, I know it's not a visual limitation for me. Now I continue to train my vision because I wanna get better, but my focus in terms of fixing this problem is improving the coordination down the left side of my body and especially my left lower body. Now, if you'd like to learn more about using brain-based training to improve your performance, I've got a class where I teach you a lot more about it. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description. So it's gonna teach you about brain-based training and it's also gonna tell you a little bit about my brain-based training coaching program that I help players with. But what I wanna do now is show you some of the things that I'm currently working on with my left side to try and improve the coordination. One of the things that I do on a regular basis is lots of left-sided complex movements. So the way this works is we've got a part of the brain that creates movement, we've got parts of the brain that coordinate movement, and when we do complex movements like circles and figure of eights, and we really focus on trying to make these shapes effectively, it helps to activate the parts of the brain that create and coordinate movement. So I do a lot of complex shapes on my left side, especially with my hip, especially with my shoulder, and I also do them in a couple of different ways. So I do them at different speeds and I do them using uh, metronomes to help me adapt my ability to get rhythm and timing. And sometimes I like to add in bands as well that adds an extra challenge. So the band's pulling me in one direction and I'm having to correct against those movements. So this is one type of training that I do a lot of, but something I've also introduced very recently is I've started doing some kind of reaction type training with my left leg with my left foot, so using something called a blaze pod. Um, I'm evaluating them at the moment to see how my body responds. So at the moment I'm working on them maybe two, three times a day, just for a couple of minutes each time, and I'll be able to report back in a month or so, in a couple of months, to see whether it makes any meaningful change for me. So this is something new that I've incorporated to try and improve my ability to get my left leg to react 
to what my visual system sees. So this is the sort of stuff that I work on in addition to the on-court work. And this is how I've been able to get to a, a pretty reasonable level with my left hand in a short space of time, because you can only play at the level that your body will allow. If you don't have the eye to hand, eye to foot coordination, if you can't read where the ball's going, it doesn't matter how much you practice, it doesn't matter how many lessons you take, your body has to be capable of doing what you want to do. So within my own game, I'm constantly trying to go, right, what area of my athleticism do I need to improve? A lot of it's about vision, a lot of it's about coordination, but also things like strength and flexibility are gonna be important as well. So that's kind of what I'm working on. If you would like to learn more about it, like I said, I've got a program where I work with players. I'll place the link there and down there to the class so you can check it out. But otherwise, if you've got any questions about what I've talked about today, any comment or feedback, I would love you to leave it down below. I always like to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, again, it's much appreciated if you could do that as well. Okay, I'll catch you next time.